get over that one. Y'all see my... I tripped on the top step coming into the coming into the front door and landed on the stoop. If I had been for my groceries, I'd have hit the stoop, I'd have hit the storm window head on. But I didn't because I didn't. That was so cool. Well, thank God for that. Amen. <laughs> God's good. You know, <clears throat> I saw this junk and it reminded me of me and Bethany. Me and Bethany over the years, Bethany was very intelligent, but she liked things simple. Okay? The simpler you got, the better it was for her. And again, she was intelligent, but she just, sometimes we'd be talking and Linda was our interpreter. She would tell me something and Linda would, Linda would translate what she was telling her, what she was saying, she translated to me. And then, I, I mean, y'all had to be there. It was always so funny because Linda would go, I'm telling Bethany something, Bethany would go, and I said, Bethany, you got that? Yes, sir, Daddy. And Linda said, what did he say? Yeah. And so, yeah, so, so it was crazy. And so, so it was really funny, actually, the way we did that. It was, it was actually funny. So, so uh, uh, after, we, after we would have our little, little talk, uh, uh, Linda would say, okay, and Linda would, would always translate for us. And so so uh, I saw this joke, and it reminded me of it. It's in the new joke book, by the way. It's not the old joke book. It's the new joke book. Let's see here. Yeah, y'all y'all see, right? We try this thing here. Alright. Alright. Alright, let's try this now. Let's see if things are working. If it is, it is, if it is, it is. We'll, we'll, we're gonna make it work one way or another. Let's see here. There we go. <clears throat> there we are. Anxiety. Let's let's get our, get your let me tell the joke first though. A four year old son was eating an apple. In the back seat of the car. Is there any can you lights on? Here, please. The four-year-old was eating an apple in the back seat of the car when he asked, Daddy, why is my apple turning brown? Not that hot enough as it is. There you go. He said, because, explained his daddy, after you ate the skin off, the meat of the apple came into contact with the air, which caused it to oxidize, thus changing the molecular structure and turning it into a different color. There was a long silence, and the son asked softly, Daddy, are you talking to me? <laughs> that, that's, that's some of the, uh, that Linda, Linda laughed. She said, that sounds so much like you and Bethany. Wow. I said, yeah, don't it? <laughs> uh, so God, God is good all the time. All the time. God is good. Now let me see what I got going on here. Daniel, today has been one of those days. Have you ever just had one of those days where you wish you had just had just uh, just sat back and, and I even had a dream about today. That's always cool too. That we were gonna have an awesome service no matter what. That's what I saw. That's right. Okay, so here we go. Get your Bibles out. Joshua chapter one. Couldn't stay awake last night, so then this morning I was trying to get the stuff going and couldn't get anything to work. I said, wow, if I could have stayed awake last night, I could have tried it last night and got it started, but no, I waited until today, and if you wait until the last minute, what do you usually get? Trouble. All right, Joshua chapter 1, stand for the reading of the word. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all these people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even to the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the high tides and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not be any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage. For unto this people thou shalt divide an inheritance of the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou now strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe all to, to, to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from the left 
or to the right hand or to the or left that you may observe that you may prosper wheresoever thou goest. The book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is there written in. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. Stretch forth your hands this way, Father. We love you. We praise your name. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We know, God, that you are alive and well. We know, God, that you are working things in our very midst. Lord, I know there's a lot of us are sick right now with these head colds and chest colds and bronchitis. It's all over the place. Uh, touch, touch them all, Father. This pollen is affecting everybody. And I ask you right now, Lord, do what you do best, and let's take care of business. Lord, in the name of Jesus, you're in total control. We thank you for it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. The church said, Amen. Amen. You be seated. Now, we were going to, we were talking, this is part two uh, of the stress uh, of uh, attacking panic. I, I, I see a lot of people, it seems like a lot of times I have to spend a lot of time getting people to calm down so I can talk to them. Calm down. If you don't calm down, I'll never be able to talk to you. If, if I can't get you to be still, then you're not going to listen. And so there's a lot of people walking around that are so so stressed out that they honestly they let the stress consume them because the stress has consumed them they no longer can can talk. And so 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 here it is now. So so we're gonna talk about this. And this is just a couple of slides from a couple of weeks ago. So most of y'all this is gonna be a small refresher. I didn't do a bunch of them, just a few, just to keep us going straight. Yeah, I love this. Uh, oh good grief. Uh, these 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 types are so, I can't even see my eyes are so clogged with pollen, are so tight, I, have, I don't know what I'm going to do. She says, anxiety girl, she can jump to the greatest conclusion in a single bound. How many can get a jump to conclusions? I, I find myself, I have to stop. Uh, when, like when we're at Emmaus, I can sit down at Emmaus and, 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 and all of a sudden, it's like you can go to a table and because there's all these tables, everybody's ever been knows what I'm talking about. There's tables with men, there's tables with women, the women's walk, men's walk, men's tables. And you go ahead and you list them, and usually there's one or two that, that always is jumping to conclusions. And one of the cool things about Emmaus is it helps them during this time to quit jumping to so many conclusions because we can actually jump to conclusions and take a small, minor problem and make it humongous just by jumping to conclusions. Amen? So, so, so here's, here's the anxiety girl. Come on up here. I'm trying to use my old computer and using my new computer too because my new computer decided I weren't going to print PowerPoints this morning. Crazy, isn't it? Okay. Uh, anxiety is an unpleasant state of informal, often accompanied by nervous behavior, such as pacing back and forth. Now, now, now this is, I want, I want to build, a, build something here for you to think about in your own life. It is of subjectively unpleasant feelings of dread over an anticipated event, such as the feeling of imminent death. All right? Now, anxiety is not the same as fear. Come on up here. Now, anxiety is not the same as fear, which is uh, a response to a real or perceived immediate threat, whereas anxiety is the expectation of a, a future threat. So, so what happens is actually is anxiety creates panic attacks. Uh, I, I've gone in before as a chaplain. People come in on the rescue squad. They're thinking they're having a heart attack, and they're not finding anything wrong with them. Nothing physically wrong with them to be having a shortness of breath as far as their enzymes and all that. And what it is, it's just an anxiety attack. These anxiety attacks take over, and people literally, they, they will pass out. They will throw up. Their blood pressure will go out of this world. It's just crazy. Some of the stuff, when you start having these anxiety attacks. And so, so, so what we're going to talk about today is a way to keep them from attacking you, and you can attack it. Amen? I'd much rather be on the offense than the defense. How about you? Amen? Come on up here, baby. You can do it. All right, this is a couple of slides again, like I said, from, from a couple weeks ago. If there's ever a person that was subject to a panic attack, it had to be Joshua. Good God, have mercy. Can you imagine Joshua having to follow behind Moses? Who in their right mind wouldn't follow behind Moses? I wouldn't. No, 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 no. You know, so, so he's called to take Moses' place. He's called to fill some big shoes. And he's called to take a big land, which is also, he's got big shoes to fill. He's got a big job to complete. And they were both impossible without God. There's things you're going through this week. There's things you're going through right now. There's things that's on your mind right now. 
You cannot do it without God. You cannot even think about it without God. And so it's very important that we think about these things. Uh, uh, that this can cause anxiety in our heart if we take it out of God's hands and put it in our own hands. So, so we don't want to do that. Come on up here, baby. You got it. There you are. So, so here we go. And here, here's, here's from the end of last week. Okay, anxiety. How do you trigger anxiety? Here it is. I'll give you this from Joshua chapter 1, verse 2. Triggers for anxiety. Watch this. When, you're, when, you, when your past triggers negative feelings. How many's got some negative feelings from your past? How many's got skeletons in your closet? How many's got somebody else's skeletons in your closet? <laughs> <laughs> hey, amen. I got all <laughs> we got an honest man out there. Amen. God deliver him right now. Boom, there you go. All right. Sometimes a reminder of a difficult past triggers anxious emotions. You know, uh, 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 say for instance, you, you, you. I, I've actually saw a person. I've seen several people over the years that honestly would not go out of their yard. They felt so. The starter wouldn't even come out of the house. And, and so, so uh, what I would do is I'd give them to exercise every day. And every day I'd move them. I'd say, okay, tomorrow I want you to go sit on the porch. And when you sit on the porch, he said, I can't. I said, no, 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 I want you to go sit on the porch. I want you to do your breathing exercises sitting on the porch. After your breathing exercises sitting on the porch, then I want you to get up and walk around and say, praise God. We, we, we got this. You got this, God. Then I want you to, to go back in the house. Don't worry about it anymore that day. The next day, I want you to walk, go, go, go stop on the step, we'll stop on the porch, sit down every minute, say, I've already done this one, i got to move on. Then go out and in the yard. And said, after a couple of days, had him where he would actually get out and go check the mail. His wife said, wow, he's checking the mail. Well, then I actually went and picked him up and drove him around. It took almost two weeks to get him to the point where he would drive a ride around in my car with me. Because something in his past had triggered him. If he goes out the house, he's going to get hurt. It's going to be bad. And so again, so the, so the past is a very powerful thing. Everybody in here, we've all got a past. We've all got things in our past we don't like. We've all got things in our past we wish had never happened. And, and certain things can happen. You know, you, you can't change your past, but you can change how you respond to it. So he said, here it is. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise. Get up from your morning. Get up from whatever's got you down right now. Get up the stuff behind you. You have to say, we say it all the time, the past is behind us. The future is ahead of us. God is with us and nothing shall be impossible. So, Moses, my servant, is dead. There's nothing you can do to bring Moses back. I would love to bring back my 20s. At least I could you know, do, change some things. I can't. You know, I'd love to even bring back some 40s. Wouldn't that be cool? I had to look down the other day and I said, I looked in the mirror and said, why are you even starting to look so old? Yeah. You know, but my wife really helped me out. After Bethany died, we were sitting there and, and we were talking about Bethany and things were really kind of emotional. And my wife looked at me and she said, you know one thing that Bethany's done this last year for you? I said, while well, sitting there, she said, she's made you look old. <laughs> Thank you, dear. Can you think of anything else to make me feel good about? It? Amen. But she was trying to be funny. Uh, but but that's what I was going to say is though, there's so many things in our past we cannot change, right? So, first, when you, your past triggers negative emotions. Now, now, watch this. Here's another trigger for anxiety. And this is a very powerful trigger, believe it or not. Uh, if I can get this trigger to work. Come on, trigger. Can we have just a little more problems before today's over? We can have some fun. Let's see here. There you go. Uh, when you feel unprepared, it says, now once you get up, go over this Jordan Valley and all these people. Wait a minute, that's what Moses was doing. I didn't know this was in the contract. I was helping Moses. I had no idea I was going to be leading the people. My job was to help Moses. I was going to do whatever he needed to do. I was doing the fighting. He was doing the thinking. I was doing the fighting. He was the brain. I was the brawn. What's going on, God? Has anybody ever had this? All of a sudden you're thrown in a position where you're going, wow, why in the world am I stuck in this position? Why have I got to be stuck in this? I had no idea I was going to have to do this. <coughs> and then when, when, when you just 
things just, you just feel like things are out of control. Your, your future's unknown, and change is scary. And, and so, 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 so here it is, he said, but thou and all those people, you go into this land. And then when you just feel like you have no explanation at all. Sometimes there's no warning, things just happen. You know, uh, uh, I hear all the time, I, people will call me and, I, uh, and say, pray for me. Uh, I had no idea my son was going to get in this wreck, or I had no idea that this death was going to take place. I had no idea all this stuff was going to happen, and, and, and they get stressed out over it. I was in the shopping line, the food line, with a lady I never even met. The guy in front of me, I was just trying to build up, build him up. He had actually, one day, he was one of my neighbors, and one day, while I was taking Bethany out of the hospital, our grass had grown kind of high. Our regular grass guy, his lawnmower was broken. I told him, take your time, it's okay. But we were we were coming from the hospital, and the grass had gotten kind of tall. And I got there, and there's this young man that lives seven houses down, or eight houses down, and he was out mowing my grass. He was going to mow it and leave and not say a word. And I walked out and said, what's happening, man? He said, nothing. I said, Linda said, who is that guy? I said, I don't know. So I said, what's going on? He said, I'm just cutting grass. I said, you, have you got the right house? He said, I got the right house. I said, who are you? I didn't even know him. He said, I live down the road there. He said, I pass by this house every day. I know you can all are sick. And I know it's been tough on you. And I saw your grass up. And, and he said, I just wanted to come by and show you that somebody still cares. Still cares. Wow. And so, so uh, he was in front of me at the checkout line. So I was in front of me at the checkout line. Uh, I had to tell the, the lady, I said, that's an awesome young man. I said, uh, millennials get some bad, bad talk about them. I said, that young man, and I told her what, what he had done. And I said, God's going to bless that young man in more ways than you ever imagined. And, and she said, oh, you're a minister. I said, yes, ma'am. And boy, she laid it on me. I mean, she just laid some stuff on me. You know, I'm kind of don't care on my shoulders because I'd have fell right down my back would have busted open. And, and, and I, I reached up and I had one of these on my, shot me on my hand, God's got this. And I took it off my hand and I put it on hers. And I said, don't you know God's got this? And she says, no, I don't, but yes, he does. So I'm going to have to change my mind and change my attitude about things. I said, yes, you do. And I said, I'll be praying for you. And, and I walked out and she was looking at the band and she was wiping tears out of her eyes. She was still working the checkout counter food line. You never know where you're going to run into people who are having anxiety problems and her son was causing her to have this anxiety. So, and things that she never expected she would have to even even confront. So, so here we go. Here we go. So here it is. So, so when you got that, that anxiety doesn't affect, uh, it's not in the vacuum. If you got anxiety, I can promise you it's going to hurt everybody in your life. It's going to hurt you. It's going to hurt every relationship you've got. It, I mean, everybody is going to be, 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 be hurt by your anxiety that you come in contact with. Your job, your people, your children, <coughs> they're all going to see it. <coughs> they're all going to feel it. You know, this morning I was anxious. I have to tell you I was anxious. You know, feeling bad, taking and then taking that stuff for it makes you anxious. How I many cold medicine makes you anxious? It either makes you anxious or sleepy. I can't take the sleepy kind, so I have to take the anxious kind. I mean, I'd rather take the sleepy kind, but that's not good for today. All right, so here we go. Anxiety attack. Well, here's how we attack it. Now, this, this is where I stopped last time. I want to really pound this and then show you what it does, all right? This, how, how do you attack your panic? How, how do you attack when you're beginning to think that you're not worthy, you're not good enough, you can't handle it, you've, you've tried before, it just doesn't work, you've tried it many, many times, and things just kept going the other way, and you're still trying, and it's not working, and you're wondering if it's ever going to work again. All these questions that you got in your mind, the biggest thing is you're not good enough and there's no hope. That's the biggest ones of all. Here it is. God knew that Joshua was full of anxiety. So, so watch what he did. He said, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Now that doesn't just mean intake. That means outgoing. Not just intake, but outgoing. We'll get to it in a minute. <clears throat> but thou shalt meditate there in day and night. But then you put it in and thinking about it. That thou mayest observe it according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good 
success. I, I like uh, one of the translations, strength and courage. You're going to lead these people to inherit the land that I promised to give their ancestors. Give it everything you have, heart and soul. Make sure you carry out the revelation that Moses commanded you, every bit of it. Don't get off track. That's what he's talking about. This is, this, this is the, right here. Now, we're, we're going to take this in modern English now. Don't, don't get off track. Either to the left or the right. So to make sure you get where you're going. Don't let for one minute let this book of Revelation out of your mind. Ponder it. Meditate on it day and night. Make sure you practice everything written in it. Then you'll get where you're going. Then you'll succeed. So, so, so here's meditation. Uh, and I, I've told this to probably 10 people this week, and I told a bunch of guys that, that may have swallowed. Uh, meditation is to mutter under your breath, is to talk to yourself. How many here talk to yourself? Every hand should go up. We all talk to ourselves. We all do. You know, uh, how many just recently said to yourself, I don't think I can do that? I don't think I'm equal to that charge. I, I don't, I don't, that was stupid. <laughs> You're talking to yourself. And when you start saying that to you, guess what you're doing? Here it is. When he says meditate with his word, what it is is healthy self-talk. You build faith. All of it. Reverse meditation is worry. Meditation, the mother on your breath, the word of God. But when you start to worry about your problems and it stays on your mind and then you start talking just in your own self, you're not using God's word, you know, or you're taking God's word to condemn you. You know, it's unhealthy. It deteriorates your faith. So, so it's very important, very important that you meditate on God's word. Meditation, getting it in your head. You know, I, I sit back sometimes, and, and you can do this. this. This is cool. This is all right. I walk back and I think, you know what? I know Jesus never, I mean, on the way to, on the way to get the tension, I was trying to get home take care of my in-laws and take care of, 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 of everything at the house. I was going up to uh, I just left uh, Mountain Creek. I was on the way to go take care of business and as I'm turning off at 33, the car goes boom, 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 boom. And so it didn't have wings so I just coasted. All the way down the, the, the exit and I pulled over to the side. DC was out, out of town. And so I called my cousin, he couldn't pick me up, and I said, okay, God, this is not good. I got to be at BCDC in an hour. This is not good. And so I said, okay, how are we going to work this? And I said, Lord, I said, I said Lord, Lord, I know you never drove Chrysler, all that. That's what you would have probably drove. Okay. Actually, actually, uh, uh, which was one of the prophets? I think it was Elijah. Elijah. One of them. Uh, he drove. He drove a Plymouth because talked about he went in a fury. Okay. All right. So, 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 so here we go. So, so I said, "What do I do, Lord? Tell me, tell me." I said, "Lord, you got to tell me, Luke, because because there's a lot of stuff going on here." So I was just picking up the phone. I called Sister Boone. I told Sister Boone what was going on. I said, "Sister Boone, I don't know how long it's going to take me to take care of all this tonight. I'm just going to have to back out." Uh, and, and I know you'll understand that she did. And then I called our guys and said, look, we're going to cancel out. Don't worry about it. Um, and and then it took me to, I, I mean, it was all, already past time by time I got back to Possum Track, got the blue car and, and, and drove it back. And then it was just crazy. And then the mechanic shop and all that. So, so but instead of going, instead of, but I made, I made a point of it. Instead of reverse meditation, which is worry, I said, I'm not going to worry about it. I said, God, I can sit here and worry about it, or I can listen to you tell me how to get out of this, what do I need to do. And so I just stopped, and I breathed. Then we breathing exercises, and I said, God, you just you show me what to do. And next thing I know, I'm in the blue car, I'm in the house, everything's calm, everything was taken care of, because I refused to get all upset over what was going on. You know, I just decided I'm just not going to do it. I'm not going to. I, I refuse to do that. And I started talking about God's word. I kept looking at my bracelet. God's got this, and 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 and, and no weapon formed against me is going to prosper. I just all this. I just thought, this is going to be okay, God. And I just kept talking in that positive direction, giving out positive word. And you know what happened? Watch this. When you begin to meditate, 
versus worry. I love this. I love this. Peace to you. Do not fear the Lord is your peace. That's in Judges. He was talking, talking to Gideon. Jehovah Shalom. Watch this. If you start meditating on God's word versus your problem, if you start meditating on God's word versus talking yourself down about how stupid that was, I don't understand. I don't know why we're doing this. Why, 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 why? You know, I had the keys catch myself this morning because I was trying to get everything going. Nothing was going. <coughs> and those closest to me this morning know that I even had to battle this morning. I had to go from meditation, from well, not worrying, but from meditation uh, uh, to, to however. I said, Lord, I, I, got, I got to keep this together. You know, can't, can't just stay. I don't feel good. No, nope, you got to keep it together. So watch this. When you start meditating, it gives you power to put your mind at ease. This is where the anxiety comes in. The anxiety attacks your mind, plays all these games, and starts racing on you. And as it starts racing, why? Wow. So watch this. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, but thanksgiving that your request be made known unto God, and the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I love it. Well, here it is in the English. Don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers. Letting God know your concerns. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good will come and settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. Matthew 11, 28. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take your yoke upon me. And learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Okay, again, this is Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is peace. I love this version here about this, <clears throat> Matthew 11, 28. Are you tired, worn out, burnt out on religion? Come to me, get away with me, and you will recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythm of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep cutting with me, and you'll learn how to live freely and lightly. Wow, that's powerful. How many want your mind to be at ease? There it is. That's so powerful. Meditate. Call that over to yourself. Bring it back to your memory all the time. Just, just, just bring it back, bring it back, bring it back. Especially when you're going out, how am I going to get out of this? And what we're going to do, blah, 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 blah. Gotta trust him to put your mind at ease. <clears throat> Secondly, of course, uh, Jehovah Ra, Ra the Lord is my shepherd. All right, get this one out. This is so awesome. I love it. Put your trust in the great shepherd. How many have ever had your child cry out for help? real help, and you just said, do the best you can. And you know it was over their head. You just said, do the best you can. I'm not talking about your training purpose. I'm not talking about that. Because sometimes when you're training, then you have to allow that to happen. I'm talking about your child's in real need, and they can't do anything about it, and you're not training them. You see they're in a bind. You've got to help them. How many of ever, ever just said, do the best you can? You didn't, did you? You were right there and helped them. You took care of business. All right? Remember, Trust him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Salah. You, so, so trust him absolutely. Lay your lives on the line for him. God is a safe place to be. God's got this. Somebody say that God's got this. You know how cool it was to have 50 guys at a mess all walking around with, with uh, they had this one on. And plus they had uh, Bethany's angels one of those on too. So those guys had Bethany's angels and they had Team Bethany. And, and uh, if I heard one time, I heard it a, a 500 times, God's got this, God's got this, God's got this. You know, uh, I, I, I honestly didn't even realize, I, I'm learning more and more how much impact that girl had on people. You know, they're, they're, they're actually going, in the ladies' walk, they're going to plant a dogwood tree in her honor. And they're over in the prayer garden, and they're going to put a uh, bench out there and flowers around it and a, her picture 
and, so we, and we, get, we get to name it, but it's we, Bethany's, uh, Bethany's Prayer Garden or Bethany's Meditation Garden, and they're going to use that, so if people want to go get away, it's going to be right there. For all, not just for Amaze, but for anybody. It'll be out there at Camp Caroline. And it's just, it's just some powerful stuff. You know, I, I, that, girl, that girl made some impact. But the biggest impact she made on me was God's got this. God's got this. God's got this. Amen? Trust Him in every situation. Talk to Him about everything. <clears throat> you know, I can't necessarily talk to everybody about everything because sometimes they just, they just don't have the answer or they don't need to know. God, God already knows to talk to Him. Amen? So now, let's go to the next one. We're almost through. I'm going to give you a little exercise too. A grounding exercise. God is so awesome. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord provides. Ready? He gives us power to transfer all our burdens to Him. Psalm 55, 22. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and He shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. I love this. I love the message of this. It says, Pile your troubles on God's shoulders. He'll carry your load. He'll help you out. He'll never let good people tumble in ruin. Wow. That's amazing. 1 Peter 5 and 7. Also, <clears throat> oh, oh, wow, I'm going to pop that thing fast. Hold on. I am trying to go back. I don't know what happened. I tell you, there you go. I must have stopped and blew my nose and didn't do that right. Isaiah 55 20, oh, Psalm 55 and 22, cast your burden upon the Lord. You shall sustain you, you shall never suffer, you to suffer the rights to be moved. 1 Peter 5 and 7, cast all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Jehovah Jireh. All right, now, ready for the next one. We're just about through. Here it goes. Jehovah Shammah, the Lord, is present. All right, I love this. This is so cool. Practice his presence. Practice his presence. Hear my cry, O God, attend to my prayer. From the end of the earth I will cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, leave it to the rock that is higher than I. God, listen to me. Shout, bend your ear to my prayer. When I'm, from, when I'm far from anywhere, down to the last gasp, I call out, guide me up the high rock mountain. Amen. Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there. Now we're getting ready to give you, a, getting ready to give you an exercise. I want y'all to think about it. It's called grounding. Some of y'all have given this to you before. Some of you have never seen it. But I want you to write this down once I put it up there. And I'm going to make a copy of our even computer copy of the key and I'll make a copy of this and I'll put it up there on the table for y'all to carry it with you. But first, the Lord is my banner. Finally, he gives you power to stand. And here it is. Haven't I commanded you be strong and of good courage? Do not be afraid, neither be dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee wherever thou goest. Here it is again uh, in, in, a, in a more simple form. Haven't I commanded you strength and courage? Don't be timid. Don't get discouraged. God, your God, is with you every step that you take. And so we boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I shall not fear what man shall do unto me. So we take comfort and are encouraged and confidently and boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be seized with alarm. Here's one you're good, good when you're good when you get a panic attacks. So we take comfort and are encouraged and confidently and boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be seized with alarm. I will not be overtaken by anxiety attacks. I will not fear or dread or be terrified. What can man do unto me? <clears throat> All right. The Lord is our banner. Jehovah Nisi. Get ready for this grounding exercise. I want you to see this. This is important. When you find yourself starting, how many can you tell when you get ready to have an anxiety attack? You start breathing heavy. You maybe start getting numb in your face. You get numb in your hands. You maybe get numb in your arms. You, you feel your heart beating. You may even start seeing spots. And you may even literally start even having tunnel vision. But you have because because it's got all the signs and symptoms of a heart attack and it can also be like a migraine coming on. So all this stuff is coming on to you and you feel it coming. Here's what I want you to do to hit it off. 
I'll make copies of this and put it out there for you, but it's, but it, but it's actually called grounding. So watch this. <clears throat> when you feel the anxiety attack, <clears throat> five things. Y'all say five. Find five things you can see. So, <clears throat> I'm under attack. I feel it. I'm starting to... <sighs> my mom, you know, you know, look around. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. And, no, and this is so simple. I see that pew. Now there's a candle. So I'm stopping. I'm stopping. I'm, I'm changing direction. I see that candle. Uh, I see Brother Baker over there. Uh, I, I see the... I'm looking over here and I see the, the PowerPoint projector. Uh, I see that TV. You want to know what I just do? I'm going. <laughs> I'm changing my direction. Now I'm, I'm grounding myself. <clears throat> five things. Hold your hand up. Five things I can actually see. Then four things you can touch. All right? I'm touching this pulpit. I can touch my hands. I can touch the controller. I can touch my phone. Four things you can touch. You say, this is crazy. No, it's not. I promise you, this will help you when you're starting to feel getting out of control. This gets you back control. Because what happens is, in an anxiety attack, you lose control. And as you lose control, everything just goes, just, just blacks out from you. And you're just thinking about that one thing, and that one thing's got you going, and you're just sitting there. If you can stop... First, five things you can see. Point it out to yourself. Call it out to yourself what you see. Don't just go, I see. Well, there's five things. Wow. No. Stop and say it. There's the PowerPoint projector. There's a TV. There's a pulpit. There's a candle. There's a monitor. Then, four things you can touch. Touch them. Actually, touch them. After you touch them, two things you can smell. Okay? One thing is don't say smell your fear. Don't say that. Have you ever gone? Like, that's something I told the boys to tell when they're on the front line. Playing ball. I say, look over at the guy before you hit him and say, I can smell your fear from over here. That's what the Satan tell you too. Two things you can smell. All right? Think about it. I, if you had to stick your head out the window, whatever. Two things you can smell. And then one thing you can taste. Pick it up, look at it, name it, put it in your mouth. If you'll take the time out to do those five things I just told you, you start grounding yourself. It seems too simple. Don't it seem too simple? And it also looks like this is crazy. Well, in this, look, what are you doing this? And your eyes are blacking out, and you've lost all control, and you're, uh, isn't that crazy too? So instead of doing that, try this. I guarantee you, if it don't work, then, hey, you're not out of anything. Try it. It can help you when you feel like you've lost all control of your surroundings. That's all it's about. Get your, get your back into the moment. That's what it says to me about this, this class we're going to teach about uh, coming up after Easter. It's about grounding. It's about coming in right now into your surroundings. I promise you, if you find yourself getting, 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 Anxious, try that. Matter of fact, I'm anxious. I'm, I'm excited, not anxious. I'm excited to hear somebody come to me and say, you know what, I was, I was getting anxious, and I tried that, and it worked. Because I can tell you, I've heard five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times the breathing works. I hear it all the time. That breathing exercise works. That breathing exercise can also be done for anxiety. But if, but if that breathing exercise alone is not doing it, try this. Or do these together. Do the breathing exercise and the five things that you can see. Does everybody know what the breathing exercise is? Everybody. If you don't, if you don't know what the breathing exercise is, if you don't know, raise your hand. I'll go ahead and tell them right now. Everybody knows the breathing exercise that we talked about. Where you, you breathe in through your nose and count to five. You just go. And you hold it and do this. And then you release it through your mouth. And do that several times, and you will find yourself amazed at how you can breathe again. Because when, you, when you're under anxiety, you can't breathe. You'll be breathing again. Now, those things right there, I promise you, it'll make a difference. God's got this. Y'all say that. God's got this. God's got this. Amen. Now, <clears throat> 
want everybody to kneel. We're just going to stand up right in the chair. We're going to make an altar call right at your seat. Right at your seat. Every head bowed, every eye closed. God has called us to do some powerful things. But all along the way, the more powerful things that he's called us to do, the more fierce the enemy will fight us. You're saying, if God really wanted to use me, why am I going through so much right now? That's why. Satan doesn't want you to do that. He sees, he can't see everything, but he can see more than you can, and he doesn't want it to happen. And so he's trying to keep you down. He senses the anointing. And when the anointing comes on your life, then he goes to fight. He wants to stomp and squelch the anointing on your life. Every time we try to move forward, if he sees us taking steps forward, he'll do his best to drag us back. And everybody's head bowed. Every eye closed. Nobody looking around. I'm just going to ask some questions. I want you to answer. I want you to, to, to be honest with yourself. Be honest with God right now. How many here would say, you know, I find myself constantly having problems with anxious thoughts, anxiety, even sometimes even panic attacks, and I want God to do something about that. Just put your hand up for a minute. There you go. There you go. There you go. God's got this. You've got the breathing exercises. You've got the grounding techniques. Try both of those. But along the way, before those, those, those are how you handle it once it's there. Meditation is there to prevent it and or keep you on track. Not saying you will never have them again. But what I just showed you with the word, if you can meditate on that word like that, what it does is it, it'll, it'll slow them down. It may even do away with them. If it doesn't, then you go to the grounding exercise and the breathing exercise. If it doesn't, those will help. Trust God in all of this. We're going to, we're all going to, uh, going to, going to pray this together. Lord, y'all say with me, Lord, 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 I need you, I need you. to be in my life, be in, my life. In, a real way. in a real way. I trust you for my salvation. I trust you for my salvation. At times, I have a hard time trusting you with my life. And I take matters in my own hands. And when I do, I know things can get out of hand. I ask you to help me to meditate on your word day and night and to know that you've got this and I don't have to worry. I don't have to and I don't have to fret and I don't have to because you've got this. And I trust you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, it's all yours anyway. I came from you. I'm going back to you. I'm yours. Help me to stay in your hand. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said, Amen, Amen, Amen. Next week is Easter. We've got to be ready for Easter. God's good. I like, well, today's Palm Sunday. I like the way they have decorated. It's really, really nice. Amen. Amen. God's so good to us. Amen. These ladies are so awesome. Y'all ladies, what do you think ladies are awesome? All right, let's go ahead now. We're going to go ahead and go, go to the Lord of Prayer. Uh, Tuesday night, be expecting something great from God. Amen. Amen. Lord. We love you, we praise your name, we thank you for your grace, your mercy, we thank you God for all you do and say in you.